So today we're going to be checking out one of the most popular bikes in our shop. It's called the Risa Mueller Nevo. And this bike is really unique and there's loads of different options. I mean, when you look at it first, it's pretty striking and very odd in some ways. I mean, it just had this really beefy down tube here. And historically, when you have a low step bike like this, it, the frame can be a bit flexy, but because the way that they build this frame, there's really no flex to it at all. It's really stiffer than most standard frames in my experience. So that's quite nice. Now it's available in three different sizes. This is the smallest size, it's a 43 centimeter. And I find this fitting riders under five foot tall. And the largest size, a 56 centimeter, you could see riders upwards of six, 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 seven. So that's a nice option there. Some other details as, you know, with this low step, it's really easy to get on and off of the bike. And I find a lot of people really appreciate that. If you have any knee or hip issues, this is a good way to go. And then it's just really versatile because you can ride it on road, off road, with the wider tires that this bike has, you can handle all sorts of different terrain. This one is the Vario version, but it's also available with the standard derailleur and it's also available with the roll-off hub as well. Some other details that are really special about this bike overall is the ride geometry. So overall, you're in a pretty upright seating position. You have this pretty aggressively slanted stem. So pushing the bars up, and then you have a slight sweep back here with these ergonomic grips and then uh, a relatively wide saddle. Now you can also set this up to be a bit more sporty, but I think a lot of people like to have this slightly more upright seating position, especially if you're riding in more urban environments. And then with the suspension seat post, you don't really mind uh, really putting more weight on your backside because you have that extra dampening there. Now, some people do find that they swap this seat post out for something else like the Connect seat post if you wanted a little bit more suspension there. Or Risa Mueller actually also has some bikes that are available with rear suspension as well in this low step style. One of the models is called the Culture and then the other is called the Homage. And we did videos on those as well, so we'll link to those uh, down below. But overall, I think what leads to this bike's popularity is the overall quality of it and then the ease of access getting on and off of it and then the ride geometry beyond that it's also available with the belt drive which i think a lot of people really appreciate and those wide tires can put you on any sort of terrain and you'll feel really confident so another option for the motor is the speed version that will assist up to 28 miles an hour as opposed to the 20 miles an hour that this one goes to Many people find that the speed motor is really helpful if you're riding longer distances or maybe you just feel more exhilarated by going faster. Now you should note that there can be regulations on where you might not be allowed to use the speed motor, but the 20 mile an hour setup, you should be able to ride it pretty much anywhere you can ride a non-electric bike. So this version is the 43 centimeter. So it has a slightly different tire size than you might find on the 47 and 56. So this has the 26 by 2.15 Schwabi Big Ben Plus. Now these are a balloon tire, so you can run them at a low pressure. And because it's a plus means it has that extra added puncture protection. So really durable and it's gonna protect you really well, no matter what sort of things you encounter on the road. Now it's also available in the GX option. The GX means grand crossover and that will give you a tire with a bit more tread to it. Now this tire does have a decent bit of tread and I find that most people will find this tire to be sufficient for anything you really might encounter. And it's great for on-road and then some mild off-road. But if you're riding more consistently off-road or maybe in some looser terrain, you might want to opt for the GX option so you have a little bit more of a knobby tire and that'll have better tread and better grip off-road. Now I should note that the GX tires don't have as much puncture protection as the street tire, so something you might want to consider. And if you did opt for that, we do have the ability to add what's called a tire liner. We work with the particular company called Tannis and they have this foam tire liner which works really well. Some other details. As I said, this is 26. The other standard version is 
a 27.5 by 2.4. That's probably the most popular tire in our shop. It's called the Schwabi Supermoto X and a little bit wider. So instead of 2.15, it's going to 2.4 and a little bit larger diameter at 27.5. For the fork on this, we have a Suntour air fork with the through axle up front and it also has a lockout. So you can adjust the suspension with air and that will adjust to your specific body weight. And then you can also adjust the lockout. So if you wanted the suspension to be locked out when you're climbing a hill or something like that. Nice metal fenders on here. Now the 27.5 or the medium and large size bike does have a slightly different fender. It's a metal with a plastic coating on it. Uh, but these work really well with the 26 inch wheels. So this version is the Vario, which comes with the Enviolo N380 hub system. This is a continually variable transmission. So all the gears are inside and there's no specific indexes to the gear. You have this continuous variation. So you can actually adjust the gears on a very minute level. This is the most popular setup because it's very low maintenance, really easy to operate, pretty affordable, and it has the ability to come with the belt drive, which I think a lot of people really appreciate. The belt gives you the advantage of being very quiet, really no grease, and it's very clean as a result. The belt will also last a lot longer than a chain will. So I find that most people find that to be really preferable. It does require a special frame, but Risa Mueller already has that covered and they use the same frame for the touring and the roll-off version as well. So the touring version comes with a traditional derailleur. So you have a derailleur cassette and a chain, whereas the roll-off comes with a belt just like this. The roll-off uses electronic shifting. So you just push a button to change the gears and you can shift between one to 14. It's a very wide range of gears up to 526%. So this has 380%. And then the derailleur version can have somewhere between four and 500%. So uh, depending on what sort of terrain you're riding on, you might find that one works better than the other. But for us, as I said, you know, the Enviolo tends to be the most popular. If you want to ride a little bit more sporty, the Touring is a good way to go. If you want to ride sporty and you want to have that really low maintenance, ease of use, the roll off is a great way to go as well. And the shifter works really well to shift into an easier gear or when you're starting out. You can see this little guy looks like he's going up a hill. Uh, and if you want to shift into a harder gear or a higher gear, as you get going, you can just twist towards you. So you, and you could really fine tune it. So if you wanted to just shift a little bit, say like, oh yeah, I feel like I'm pedaling a little bit too fast. I just want to change it just a little bit. I can do that very easily. So I find that it's really intuitive and you don't really have to think about it too much, which many people really appreciate it. So as with the drivetrain options, there are also two different motor options for this bike as well. And I find that that's one of the really nice things about Reese and Mueller. You can get different colors, different motors, different drivetrains, even different tires, and you can customize the bike to fit your specific needs. So this one has the Bosch Generation 2 Performance Line CX motor and it's a very high torque motor, it has up to 75 Newton meters of torque, which really will climb up any hill and give you plenty of power off the line. Now this bike has a reduction gear inside the motor to allow it to operate really efficiently. And that's why you'll see the cog on here is a bit smaller than you might find on a traditional bike. So the Bosch system uses a technology called pedal assist which basically assists you as you pedal. Now you can ride the bike without assistance or you can turn the assistance on and get anywhere from a 50% to upwards of 300% boost. It does so by using three different sensors. Inside the motor, there's two sensors. One senses how fast the pedals are moving and the other senses how hard you're pedaling. Then you have another sensor which is on the rear wheel which tells the bike how fast it's going overall. Now the system takes all this information and makes calculations a thousand times per second. And based on this, it provides assistance. 
I find it really gives a very seamless experience and I found it to be really the best on the market. Inside this thick tubing here is the Bosch PowerTube 500. It's a 500 watt hour battery and it's 36 volt, 13.6 amp hours. Generally speaking, you're gonna find a range of about 30 miles out of one battery, but you can also opt to add an additional battery to double your range. Now, that's an average, but you can find yourself getting upwards of 70 miles out of a single battery if you use low assistance. I've even seen people get up to 100 miles if they're switching the assist on and off but most people are gonna see somewhere around 30 miles out of a single battery. You can lock the battery in place using this keyhole here. Now you can charge the battery on the bike through a port up here, or alternatively, you can remove the battery to charge it off the bike. So the bike has a really nice integrated rack with a 44 pound weight capacity. So really great for putting panniers on the side, or if you want, you can attach a basket or a bag, or even potentially a child seat on the top. Although one thing to note is that a child seat, many of them have a weight rating of over 40 pounds, so you might want to be careful about how much weight you actually put on the rack because the capacity is 44 pounds. Now this one comes with the rack time attachment system, so there's these little ports here which you can slide a rack time plate into. but some of the other models, particularly the medium and large size, are generally going to come with the MIK attachment system. It's more of an open source system and we're finding it on more and more bikes. You also see that we have this Bibia strap here, which is adjustable. Really great for throwing a jacket under here or maybe a bag or something like that. And you can adjust the straps to your specific needs. So I find it's really convenient to have there. And for added security, we have this nice frame lock here. It's an Abus Shield 5750. And this will allow you to lock the rear wheel and you have the option to add a chain in here, which will add to the security as well. Now, I don't find that this lock will be sufficient for some places where you need a bit more higher security, but it's a nice addition to having uh, another heavy duty lock to use along with it. For the brakes, we have the Magura MT4 dual piston calipers up front and the dual piston in the rear as well. 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. For the brakes, we have the Magura MT4 levers, which hydraulic disc brakes, and they have an adjustable reach. So you can really dial in the adjustment to exactly what your, your reach of your fingers are. I find that to work really nice. So this bike's set up with the Intubia display, but it's also available with what's called the smartphone hub. But please note that the smartphone hub is not available with the roll-off version. To turn the display on, you just hit the power button here. It takes a couple seconds to turn on, but you can see some of the information. So the battery life here, this is where you'll see the assistance level change, the speedometer, and then you see the range. Right now you have dash dash because we're in off, so really you have unlimited range. But if we switch up to the first level of assistance, you can see in eco mode, you get 45 miles of range left based on four out of five bars. Now this also is gonna change depending on how you ride the bike and what type of terrain that you're riding, how heavy you are as a rider. As we switch to the higher assist levels, we go from 50% to 100%, 200% assistance. Well, actually this one's e-mountain bike mode, so it'll give you basically between tour and turbo mode, which is the top level of assistance at 275%. Now it is an option to leave the normal sport mode, which is about 200%. The e-mountain bike mode gives you this varied level of assistance depending on your needs. They call it e-mountain bike mode because when you're mountain biking, you find that your assistance level or the needed assistance level varies quite a bit and the bike tries to adapt more in those scenarios. We can check out some of the different displays by hitting this I button. You can hit the I here or you can hit it on the thumb pad here. So you can see the odometer here, the trip distance. Now if you wanted to reset the trip distance, you can just hold this reset and button down just for a couple seconds and you reset the trip distance. Now, you might have noticed that the trip distance was higher than the odometer because this display actually came off another bike. So the information is saved on the display 
not the bike. As far as the trip distance, the odometer is gonna be specific to the bike. You have the clock, max speed, average speed, which I just reset, and then trip time, which would have been reset as well. Another detail on the display is you have the ability to turn the lights on. Now these run off of the Bosch battery. If you just tap this button here, you're gonna turn the lights on. Now on the high speed models, you'll find that the lights are gonna be on all the time. This allows the brake lights to always be active as well as the horn. So this is really important for that added safety on those high speed bikes. The last feature I wanna show is what's called walk assist. To activate walk assist, you're gonna tap this button up here and hold the plus button. And this will basically turn the motor and allow you to move at a couple miles an hour and it's really helpful if you're walking the bike up a hill or if you have the bike loaded up and you're walking around an uh, area, you really don't want to have that extra weight there. So that's a really nice feature. Many people uh, use it for some various scenarios. Well, I hope you guys found this video to be helpful and you enjoyed it. If you have any questions about this bike or just electric bikes in general, just leave them in the comments below or reach out. I'm always happy to help and I look forward to seeing you in future videos, all right? Well, see you soon.